Hi everyone and welcome once again to Ruby's Classic Cooking and today I'm doing a stir-fry pork with rice. So first I'm going to put my rice on. I just used Uncle Ben's converted rice and for my husband and myself, just the two of us, I'm going to cook three quarters of a cup of rice. Oh, sorry. I'm going to cook two thirds of a cup of rice. I'm just going to measure that in here. Now I don't own a rice cooker. I just own some corningware casseroles and other casseroles with lids. So you can do this with a microwave and any casserole dish that you have that has a nice lid. So I've got two thirds of a cup of rice in here. Now I'm going to add two of these of water, which will be a cup and one third of water, right? Do the math. That's two thirds plus two thirds makes four thirds, which is three thirds is a one, one, and then there's one third left over, so that's one and one third cups of water. So that's one and two. So twice as much water as there is rice. So now I have clean hands, so I'm just going to stir this around a little bit. And then make sure it's sort of spread out here underneath your water and nothing's floating. There you go. Put my lid on. Now, my, my microwave has a rice button, so I'm just going to push the rice button tonight. Now, if I wasn't using the rice button, I would put this in the microwave for five minutes on high, then I would put it on at 70% for 20 minutes because that will yield me perfect rice every time. Okay, so I'm going to put the rice on and then I'm going to do with the vegetables, deal with the vegetables for my stir fry. Uh, oh yes, and I forgot to mention that's an eight cup corningware casserole I'm doing all that in. All right, now to start my stir fry. Now. I've got a can of water chestnuts here, whole ones, which I'm going to slice into pieces. I've got some frozen broccoli and cauliflower here. Now, normally I would use fresh broccoli and fresh cauliflower, but you know what? I've got frozen. I haven't got any fresh today, so guess what? It's going to be frozen. I have a turnip, a regular cabbage. If you have Napa cabbage and you want to use that, hey, go for it. And three carrots, which have been peeled and have the ends cut off. Over here, I also have some crushed garlic and pieces of ginger root to put in to my wok, which is a non stick wok, so I'll be using a non stick spatula to do it with. So I'm just going to cut my veggies up, place across my cabbage like this. Now, a very essential vegetable, too, is an onion. This is just a plain yellow onion, the cheap kind you get at a grocery store. Nothing exotic about that. And I'm just going to cut the um, cut the stem out of the middle of my cabbage too when I'm, as I'm coming to it. So that's rather tough. And you don't want to have to eat that when you're eating your, eating your stir fry. And now this onion I'm going to cut lengthwise so I have some nice long thin strips for my stir fry. So I'm just going to put this here like this down through it and then you just cut it in half and I want to cut you see what I'm doing here <laughs> it's hard to see on this bench isn't it okay I'm just going to cut through here and make like a witch so I'm going to cut this into like this and then these will fan out and make long thin pieces when they go into my into my walk so carefully so you don't cut yourself when you're doing this here we go easier to do it this way. Just use the onion to support me. There we go. There's my onion done up. And now for my carrots. I'm going to cut them on the diagonal. When you're wok cooking, you want to increase the surface area of your vegetables as much as possible to reduce the cooking time. Yeah, keep them crispy. These do tend to roll a little bit, so be careful when you're cutting them. I'm using a rather large butcher knife to do this, so that way I can get back here away from it and Oops, you can't see a thing I'm doing, can you? Because there's turnip there. Alrighty, move the turnip out of the way. Try 
try as much as possible to cut your carrot slices all the same thickness so they all cook about the same amount of time. Yeah, that piece I'll leave because if I try and cut that, I'll probably end up cutting myself. So, And here's my turnip. I'm just going to cut this into half and half. And you know what? If you like parsnips, hey, you could throw some parsnips in here. What the heck? They're kind of like carrots, so why not use parsnips? Personally, I don't like parsnips, so I won't be using them. But. I cut this in half, creating a flat surface, and now I'm putting this on its flat surface to cut slices out of it. And then, I'll cut those once again. Oops. Okay, I'm just going to cut these into like nice thin slices. Like this. Okay, so probably half of one and a half of one of those is probably enough. And when these thaw out a bit more, I'll cut these in half, these frozen vegetables. I put my can of I open my can of water chestnuts and I rinse them off with cold water and drain them. So I'm just gonna put them on my board right now. And I'll slice these up in a nice crunchy little bit. Slice crunchy circles. There we go. All right, here are all my veggies all prepped and ready to go into my wok for cooking. And now, here's my pork chop. I'll get this cut up into for wok cooking. And that goes first into my wok with my ginger and my my ginger and my, my garlic. I'm going to take the bone off of this pork chop. Now, I'm going to take this pork chop and slice it up in nice thin slices. So. And be ready for supper. Nice thin slices, see? Never took a lesson in butchering in my life, but uh, doesn't take butcher shop lessons to be able to cut thin slices of meat like that with a sharp knife. Yeah, I'm going to take all these slices and I'm going to turn them the other way and cut them into something a bit more bite sized by cutting them all in half. There we go. And that's a bit large. Cut that one in half again. Okay, there we go. Nice little bite sized pieces of meat ready to go on the wall. There you go. Okay. I'm probably going to take the rest of this and put it on to cook and feed some of that meat to our visiting puppy dog. <laughs> no point in wasting it, right? Okay. I'm going to heat my wok up with some oil in it to a uh, nice hot simmering oil and I'm going to start throwing these pieces of meat in and I'll show you what they look like after I'm finished with them. Okay, and while my meat is over there frying up a storm, I'm going to be making a slurry of cornstarch and some cold water. Nice generous heaping teaspoon of cornstarch. You need to mix it with water and create a slurry because it's a chemical reaction that will have when it's exposed to heat. So mixed with water it will react differently than if it's, there's no water in here. A tablespoon or so of water, cold water, because you don't want it to activate. You mix it together, it dissolves very readily. Makes like a white, kind of a milky kind of liquid. And then when it cooks, it becomes a clear, it makes a nice shiny coating for your vegetables and your meat. And it, uh, it also gives you a nice thick sauce for your, your vegetables. And I'll mix that up just, a uh, just before I export put it on because it does tend to settle to the bottom of your bowl and you need to give it a little stir up just before you pour it on. And there are my meat bits all nicely cooked in my wok. See that? Getting to be nice and golden brown. Yum. And now I'll take these out of here and I'll start cooking the vegetables. That's uh, Chinese five spice powder that I sprinkle on top of those by the way. And I'll be doing my vegetables kind of in order of being the hardest. So I'll start out with my onions. Then I'll do my carrots and my turnips. And then I'll start with the, uh, the cabbage will go in last and these water chestnuts 
just a few minutes to go and these two just enough to keep them through and defrost them okay I'll be right back to show you what the vegetables look like okay that doesn't take very long to stir fry my onions see how they're getting kind of brownish and uh, oops see how they're getting kind of brownish and, and translucent now I add the carrots and here is my nicely wisely boiled rice in the microwave all done ready to serve okay here's the carrots there's what they look like and now I'll be adding my turnip and if I had parsnip I'd be adding my parsnip too okay. Here's the turnip slices added, and now I'm going to add the cabbage and the frozen vegetables and the water chestnuts all at once. Okay, then I'll be back and I'll show you what the completed vegetables look like. Here's all the veggies getting nicely warmed up, and now I'm going to add my meat back in. I'm going to add some soy sauce, I'm going to add some more five spice powder, and I'm going to add water, let it steam. Then I'm going to add my cornstarch water. Okay, here is my wok full of finished food which is more than enough for two people and that only has one pork chop in it but when you see the plate you'll see there looks like there's plenty of meat to for everybody in fact you could feed four people four adults out of this no problem at all and you saw what it went into it not a lot of anything went into it and if you added some bean sprouts or some of those little tiny cobs of corn you'd easily have enough here for four people and nobody would feel that they didn't get enough pork chop to go for themselves. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching my video today and my version of pork stir fry. You can use, equally use chicken or beef for this stir fry, whatever you would like, whatever your favorite meat is. Or you could just do it vegetarian and not add any meat to it. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and that you will like, subscribe, comment, try some stir fry at home and enjoy. So I hope you'll come back next time to watch me on Ruby's Classic Cooking. Bye for now.